Rogers, and there's this uh, whole thing going on down at Howard University. Hey, Howard University, why isn't there a Jackie? <laughs> It's like a knee-jerk reaction now. I do it to myself. University. <laughs> Why not Marlin College? <laughs> Howard University. Is that the black Harvard? <laughs> do they well, call it that? has been referred to that, uh, uh, that by some. Yeah, the black Harvard. Well, you have to understand. You know, you, you're very uh, negative, Howard. Right. Because at one time, black couldn't get into Harvard. <laughs> so really? It was the black Harvard. Really? Where were you born? That's so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't know. I did not know that. Uh, anyway, there have been a couple of speakers down there lately who uh, were participating in some anti-Semitic rhetoric. So, in other words, some guys who could help black people. Uh, Improve this situation by... No, these are college students. They don't need anybody to help improve their situation. But they're going and they're listening to some guys talk. Right. And the guys start doing these chants. And they start saying, who killed Nat Turner? And a bunch of people in the audience yell, the Jews. <laughs> Nat Turner? Do you know who Nat Turner is? <laughs> I didn't know anybody knew who killed Nat Turner. But apparently, according to some of the people in the audience, it was the Jews. Who controls the Federal Reserve? The Jews. And it was just like oh, that. Oh, boy. You know, I got to laugh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It went on and on and on. And, of course, it got into the newspapers, and there have been more and more calls for the university to denounce these kinds of speakers and to say that they're not going to have them at the university anymore and that they're not going to deal with the Nation of Islam and their speakers. Well, the president of the university has said that uh, the university condemns all forms of ethnic violence including anti-Semitism, but they do not plan to punish the students who led the anti-Semitic chants at the rally, and they have no plans to bar appearances by members of groups like the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. well, then later in the article, yeah, I guess they talked to some of the students, and uh, someone said, while saying he felt that the statement and tone of the rally was inappropriate, Chris Johnson, a junior from Dallas majoring in communication, said he detected a double standard. Howard Stern in New York says negative things about blacks every day. And nobody has special legislative sessions to talk about hate crimes. <laughs> I talk about blacks every day. I don't talk about the blacks are responsible for, uh, for uh, killing Nat Turner. Uh, so stupid. Well, first of all, let's let's start let's start uh, calling it the way it is. If a white university started behaving in this fashion, there would be a when I say white university, I mean a typically white institution. All hell would break loose in this country. It's the same reason I was saying that Richard Belzer was a hero because uh, this Arsenio Hall, if he had had let's say David Duke, a white supremacist on TV and sat there and kissed his ass and didn't ask him a question about any of the obvious slurs he was uh, using, he would be, uh, he would be booed. It's a double standard uh, all of a sudden and... Um, well, you're claiming the same thing as Mr. Johnson. He says this is a double standard where you're concerned. Well, I don't, uh, I don't believe his analogy is correct. <laughs> I don't certainly advocate the... Uh, Annihilation of any people. No one's advocating annihilation. Well, come on. What is he saying? If the Jews are sucking your blood... You know what? i got to laugh about all this. Because, first of all, um, it, it's amazing to me how a black guy who was sitting there in bad economic times, sitting there to try to figure out what his problem is in life, why he's not succeeding... And if I went and paid money, or even for free, I took two hours of my time to go hear somebody speak who was going to give me the answer about why my life was so miserable. And he got up there and he said, uh, the reason you're so miserable is the Jews. I'd punch him out. <laughs> because I said, I, I, I need an answer about why things are going so badly for me. And I'll tell you, Jews are saps. They, uh, Jews like Walter Annenberg, who give $50 million to the United Negro College. Jews who have been philanthropic and uh, generous toward black institutions. Um, should immediately back away. Because 
Oh, then you're saying that yes. Louis Farrakhan is all black people. No, I'm and, saying, uh, let me this finish. This person is all black Let people. me finish. I knew you were going to okay. say that. Go on. When um, 11 members of Congress, black guys, are not willing to denounce Louis Farrakhan, when um, you have uh, a situation where black universities will not denounce... Well, don't give to that university. <laughs> what? I said don't give No, to you got to understand university. something. If there is a wave of acceptance of this stuff, and you have to feel bad about it because you sit there and you look at how most of white America must love this, watching the Jews and the yeah, blacks, blacks fighting. It's, it's the great two comedy. Most hated groups the two on most Earth. hated the two most hated groups <laughs> on Earth. Scrapping with each other. Scrapping with each other. You gotta <laughs> love it. Because there's some powerful white wasp sitting there somewhere going <laughs> David Duke, he's yeah. having a ball. Those dopes. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. Isn't this great entertainment? Court jesters. And the saddest part of all is that um the Jews will go on doing what they're doing. The blacks will go on doing what they're doing. And none of this means anything. But the biggest skeeve on the planet, Arsenio Hall, <laughs> who sits there and by just not asking any question or... or, or well, well, how would Arsenio know? Ah, uh, come on. How would Arsenio know? Jesse Jackson doesn't do anything. Yeah, Arsenio Black senators is a, and, and congressmen do Arsenio is a human do being. Anything. He doesn't have to look toward he, anybody. Yes, he, he's, a, he's not the brightest guy in the world. He's waiting for somebody to tell him what to do. I want to see the day when David Letterman has on the head of the Ku Klux Klan and sits there on a couch for an hour ooing and eyeing and uh, looking like a puppy dog. You of all people know uh, Arsenio's waiting to see what the trend is so he can hop on it. Yeah, well, I am waiting to see the day when Jay Leno and David Letterman have the head of the Ku Klux Klan on and sit there with reverence, like Arsenio's reverence for Louis Farrakhan, by sitting there and acting like the Pope had just sat down, he sends a message that this is good. This guy is a man to be respected. And I want to know where all these phony baloney publicists who call us all the time and say, you are not allowed to have my, my guest on, my client on as a guest for your show. You are not allowed to have them on because you are disgusting. I want to see these publicists who continue to book people on the Arsenio Hall show. And Richard Belzer is the only one with any balls, or even though he has one, who, set, who stood he up. Has, he was the only one that has any ball. Huh? Any ball. <laughs> and he stood up and he said the following. I'm not going on Arsenio's show anymore. Because you know what? I wouldn't go on David Letterman's show anymore if he sat there with the head of the Ku Klux Klan like that. And sat there and kissed ass. And I'm certainly not going to go on Arsenio. What is it? One of the listeners said, what about the advertisers? No, oh, oh, you know, that is a great point. <laughs> I love advertisers. Where? It, what? Tell me what advertiser now wants to be associated with the Arsenio Hall show after a display like that. Any number of them. They'll all go on it. But God forbid you talk about vagina. Terry Ricolto will start an uh, advertising boycott <laughs> campaign against you. You know, this country is, is in a coma but like Kurt Cobain. What it points out to you, Howard, is the total powerlessness of black people. Because nobody cares. Yeah, well, what you know, that's... And by the way, that is the real joke of it. Yeah. Do you think that, the, uh, that a powerful Jewish person in this country gives a rat's ass what Louis Car Farrakhan thinks? It's a joke. What can he do? Not much. Right. Who's on our phone? Uh, I don't want to bust up this conversation, but this guy can give you a very quick scientific explanation as to why um, those things in the bathroom are dangerous. Well, that, that oh. is the most important news. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's a chemical reaction going He'll in there. He'll explain it to you. Yes. A full high. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, if those uh, 2,000 flusher things have the chlorine version, sometimes they have the chlorine, sometimes they have the not, mm -hmm. the chlorine like a bleach, mm -hmm. yeah. and urine has ammonia in it. Yes. When the ammonia hooks up with the chlorine, you get ammonium chloride gas. Mm. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's in our bathroom. Well, you can see there's a fog in there. <laughs> and what does ammonium chloride gas do? Well, I don't know. All I know is it, it'll, it'll make your eyes tear really bad, and it's very very dangerous, and that's why when you do cleaning products, they always tell you don't mix a chlorine product with, like, Comet or anything else. Tom, you got to get that stuff. Yeah, they've already been removed. Really? Yeah. Who removed them? <laughs> Tom ordered somebody else. I think I know who removed them. <laughs> who had to do that I know job. who did it. Uh, you know Rocky? Oh, poor Rocky. Did you make Rocky, Rocky remove them? Either Rocky or Paul did it. Did he oh, wear gloves? I'm sure. 
Wow. I hope so. <laughs> For his sake. He's a brave man. He's a, more of a hero than Belzer. Who is Rocky? I don't know Rocky. You know Rocky. Of course you do. I don't know Yo, I'm not removing those urine cases. What is it, John? There's an angry black man on the phone who, you know, thinks you're a hypocrite, make, make fun of Farrakhan and all that stuff. Oh, I love that. I think well, you're right. I think you're perfect. Do we move? Right. Um, of course I'm right. Well, he, doesn't, he has a good point. He yeah. a, oh, he does? John, uh, he convinced uh, John of something. Oh, John. John, you're an empty head. So. John's got to convert. He's got to be black. All right. Well, thank you for the call. Okay, later. What is it, you nitwit? Don't, Howard, don't start that way. All oh, I'm saying yeah. is that you... I'm a, you I'm a hypocrite. Listen, no, one second. Salam alaikum, by the way. Last time, uh, yeah, right. Salam salam. Last right. time I talked to you, you, you called me douche lips because I pointed out that you're a hypocrite. Now, I'm not, I'm not advocating what Farrakhan says, but in the same breath, Mm -hmm. You 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 play the KKK message. You you don't denounce the man. Oh come you, on! You if you don't know, him. if you, you don't put, know put, that put, I am sitting there goofing on that guy, did you see our New Year's Eve special when that guy started to speak and the audience was booing? Do you think that the, that my audience finds him humorous when to, he says "Wake up, white you, people"? But, but but to you, it, it, it's hysterical. Yeah, no, 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 that's you proof positive. Can't, then why can't you laugh? Uh, at what, what you are says? you are the. Why can't, why can't you laugh at it? Laugh I do laugh at it, but you got to understand something. Arsenio Hall is. A, is a you role model angry. to these nitwits who live in Harlem who sit there and with their gangster uh, rap. And you better be careful, too, pal, because I got news for you. The hardcore black uh, criminal is going to spot you as the weakling that you are, oh, and you're going to be the weak. first one to be shot in a drive-by. No, no, I'm not. Yeah, please, let me tell you. Oh, come on. You look like a... You, don't you know who you look like? That way. What, you probably <laughs> look like um, uh, that kid Urkel on, um, on the... Uh, uh -huh. On that show, no, just that my because, kids watch. Just, just because you have somebody black that can talk to you intelligently, you have to stare. No, nah, come on, you How probably you? look Stop like it. Urkel. And Stop when it. when the brothers see you who follow this uh, this rhetoric with the gangsters and the guns and uh, dropping out of school, they're going to get a hold of you. Soon. You want to know something? See, you, uh, basically, I'm a fan. But when you put in no, the corner, you're not. You're you not a fan. You know what you are. You, you, you you're don't, a nitwit. I've heard on, from you, you before. You, you don't know anything. Let me tell you something. I already told you about your. Where are all the advertisers? How come? How come all the advertisers aren't upset about Arsenio Hall sitting and condoning an, an anti-Semite? They should be. I'm not saying that's right. right. So I'm there's the hypocrisy. You. I'm talking about the third man. You're a bougie. You're a bougie. I know. I know what you are. I've, I grew up in a black community. I know guys like you. Bougie, bougie. sell out. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Selling out your own brothers. All right, fine. Yeah. Selling out? What are you talking about? He now? sold out his own people. <laughs> For what? Who knows? You just say that, they get upset. <laughs> his mama was on the phone. I didn't want to tell him. Oh. What was she doing? She said that uh, I should bring home a barrel of Vaseline. <laughs> She's going to need it tonight. That guy, that guy, I know. That guy. That guy don't look radical, believe me. He's as much trouble as uh, all the other whiteies. <laughs> he's uh, he's he, he's better behaved than Greg Gumbel. I know exactly where this guy's at. I've talked to him before, Robin. I got him all sized up. All right. Okay. The Lebanese cabbie and the two other men who have been accused in the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, the Brooklyn Bridge shootings, belong to a militant Arab enclave that had been monitored by the FBI and the Israeli intelligence organization, Mossad. I like the uh, woman on TV, the one who is the aunt or something. Remember? Oh, yes, that woman. Is Gloria Ackle or whatever her name is. He never said nothing about the Jews. What are you about? This guy's a member of, of a radical Arab group. Yeah, she, meanwhile, didn't know her house was full of guns. So don't listen to her. Right. She says, well, you think I would have lived in this house if I knew there were guns in here? Well, there were tons of guns in there. So I guess that all that FBI monitoring really helped protect us. Yeah, they had this guy under surveillance. Yeah. They should have called in David Hasselhoff from Baywatch. <laughs> he could have swum through the sand. What good is this surveillance if you never know what these guys are going to do even while you're watching them? FBI is watching everybody and then they <laughs> go off half cock. I love that guy, though, who did it. I mean, you got to, you know, aside from the fact that people are dead, it's almost comical if you can separate that. They had him on the news. They, they showed his whole thing. Yeah. You know, they, they took you through the plot. Right. And he, <laughs> when he shot at the, I guess the, the, the Jews were in a school bus or right, something. Right, yes, they were coming from town where they were praying for a rabbi. Yeah, so when, he, when you sh so when he shot at him, he shot through the glass of his own window. So then after he, which was brilliant, all he had to do was roll down the window. He would have gotten away with it. He wouldn't have had to have his car fixed. And he goes to his, one of his good buddies to have his car fixed, who owns an auto repair shop. And he holds a gun to some of the guy's heads over there and tells him to fix the car. Yeah. Because he didn't kill any Jews. <laughs> 
But the best is that he was here on a 10-year student visa. Yeah, for Rockland County. I yeah. figure if that's where you're going to school, you don't need to come here. No, you could stay in Lebanon and get about the same <laughs> education. You don't have to go to Rock. Get better education. We're we're in this country. We you know we always say you know hey we're against illegal immigration. We're against we're against we're against. And then we just hand out student visas to guys who are way too old to be students. I say if you're 28 and you're still a student, well, there's something been wrong. In the country for 10 years. 10 years on a student visa. When does that student when visa does it expire? expire? That's yeah. what I'm asking. I mean, what kind of thing is that? How long do you get? Fred. I don't know. <laughs> what are you eating over there? Pretzel. <laughs> No, no, no. That's a real appetizing thing. <laughs> well, anyway, they say that. Why does it take is... him so long to swallow his food? It's Fred a... has a problem. Look, he's, it's still in there. Fred does not know how to eat, Howard. You know that. He really does. He hates food. I think Martians don't really digest uh, human food very well. True. Hey, you know who could tell us how a guy is here on a student visa for 10 years? Jackie was in college for 14 years. <laughs> Didn't you drag out that whole Michigan State thing for like. There, there is no hurry. To There's no hurry to graduate. But this guy's no longer at school That's in right. Rockland County. Yeah. He, was close. he was driving a cab. Good good education at uh, Rockland, huh? <laughs> so he's qualified to drive a cab now. Yeah. Gee, that, that's a pretty good endorsement for Rockland Community College. A lot of our graduates are now driving cabs. <laughs> Why don't you give us more? <laughs> Do you really need a college education to drive a cab? That's what my father used to always say to me. You want to be a disc jockey? Do you really need a college education to be a disc jockey? <laughs> So I think you got a point there. He says, why don't you study something else? Just so you have something to fall back on. I could have gone to Rockland and been a cab driver. So anyway, people are, are assuming, if this story is true, that these guys belong to some little enclave that's uh, involved in terrorist activities, that it's true, what we've been feeling all along, that Arab terrorists have a stronghold right here of course. in the United States. They say the cache of weapons they suspect that he was uh, keeping were also for future terrorist acts. Here's the joke of it all, Robin. The FBI is totally aware of who these Arab fanatics are who will now turn our streets into guerrilla warfare like, like the yeah, streets we'll of Lebanon. Yeah, we'll become Beirut. We'll become Beirut. This is where all anarchy is... Uh, all, that, all that there is is anarchy. And the FBI knows exactly who to deport. In fact, and they so probably have grounds. They probably have grounds to deport a lot of these guys because they're here on student visas and stuff. The problem is we have become so mired in the legal system and the lawyers and the fighting of the rights. And wait a second, these are not even citizens. Why do why do uh, aliens? It's a privilege to come into this country when you're not a citizen, is it not? Yeah, if there is any reason that we suspect a visitor is up to terrorist activity. There is no reason. It's not like we're taking away the rights of an American citizen. We're saying go back to your own country. That's all we're saying. All we're not even saying go to jail. Shores and you get treated just like an American. Yeah. Why? Why is it that the FBI can't say, you know what? We've got good reason to believe. And even if they're wrong, let's say they're wrong. Let's say these guys, the FBI guys, are out of control. But they're saying we want these guys to go back to their own home. What's wrong with them saying that? We have I reason. Don't know. You don't know? That's right. No one seems to know. I don't know. But uh, you know what? We got guys at the FCC. You got congressmen meeting with uh, with with game video video game uh, with manufacturers. None of them are busy looking into this question. This is what pissed. Some of their fellow students have been holding vigils at their bedside at St. Vincent's Hospital, and yesterday they um, suffered. Another tragedy, uh, KKK symbols and swastikas were scrawled on hospital walls. Where was Fred during this? I wasn't watching him yesterday afternoon. Did you see him? Latvian. That's with Jackie. So when they went into the bathrooms of the hospital, they had to see that, too. Wow. Oh, a lot going on, huh? Crazy, wacky world we live in.